What do we think? Are these claims about the impact of a meat-based diet on the environment true? That's tonight's big question. Should we go vegan to save the planet? Would you be willing to forego your steak, your chicken breast or your salmon to reduce carbon emissions? Joining me to discuss this is, I'm delighted to say, Geordie Shaw star and fitness coach Jay Gardner, who is a practising vegan. We also have the farming coordinator at Viva, Kerry Waters, and they are an organisation that are supportive of a vegan plant-based diet. I'm also delighted to welcome Mail and Telegraph journalist and author Ross Clark and the political relations manager for the Countryside Alliance, David Bean. Uh, let me start, if I can, with uh, you, Kerry Waters. Should we go vegan to save the planet? Well, the IPCC just last month produced a report warning of the impact of climate change on the planet at the moment. Um, in it, they said that plant-based alternatives and also cellular agriculture, so that's your lab-grown meats, they are the key to solving the issues that you saw in that clip. So issues of animal welfare, land use, zoonotic disease, pesticide, antibiotic reduction. But it's not just the IPCC, it's also the World Health Organization, Chatham House, Oxford University, and also um, the World Wildlife Fund. They all state that a, a plant-based diet is necessary, and a plant-based diet is also advocated as healthy for all stages of life by the British and American Dietetic Association. The science is very clear that switching to vegan diets is a simple way to reduce your carbon footprint, but also solve the ecological crisis. However, the UK government and the National Farmers Union, the ADHB, they're doing nothing to prepare farmers for this. They're nothing, doing nothing to help farmers to transition and keep producing quality plant-based vegan food. The debate seems to be almost always centred around how to make meat more sustainable when the science is shaky at best. And the massive disruption is about to come to the industry in the form of these new technologies and the impact of climate change. So where is the government in providing support and training and infrastructure to save our British farming? Instead, they're throwing farmers under the bus with these new agricultural reforms. And farmers are suffering from spiralling costs of feed and fertiliser due to the war in Ukraine and Brexit. So myself and Viva, I'm currently doing a doctoral research at Edge Hill University to look into what is a just transition for animal farmers. And also we set up Viva Farming because vegan farming and vegan food really is the only way to save the planet. Um, there's an issue, though, isn't there, in relation to the plant-based diet, Kerry Waters, which is that we are omnivores and we need animal protein, which is the most bioavailable source of protein out there. The issue you've got with non-meat alternatives is that vegan burgers are full of unhealthy ingredients and, and require air miles. And, of course, the production of plant-based food in, involves vast monocrop agriculture, pesticides and fertilisers. Not very natural. Well, if you look at transport costs, it really does figure very little when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. Most of it um, comes from, so it comes from ruminant animals and feed. Um, when you're talking about a plant-based diet, what we mean is a whole foods diet based on healthy grains and rice and beans and pulses. And actually, you'll find that the bioavailability of things such as soy um, is actually quite close to um, animal protein. And when you put, say, a rice and a bean together, you'll get a full amino acid profile. OK, well, uh, let's speak to Jay Gardner. Great to have you on the show, Jay. Geordie Shaw, star, of course, fitness coach. You are the picture of health and you're a vegan. Tell me more, Jay. Yeah, so I went vegan about three and a half years ago. Um, before I was vegan, I was eating a fully meat diet. I was eating about three chicken breasts a day, 10 to 14 eggs. I was drinking milk from the glass. And I turned it around. I just wanted to go healthy. I researched different diets across the globe. And a lot of it was pointing towards reducing your animal in, animal product intake. And I eventually went vegan to become healthier. And I've never looked back. Um, and to put that in perspective, I mean, my blood pressure is now 120 over 84. My cholesterol's in the twos. I never su suffer from a headache anymore. I feel a lot better. So for me, for my journey, it's worked on that health, health as aspect in comparison to what I used to do. 
OK, well, that's a compelling argument that you've posited, Jay, as have you, Kerry Waters. There you go, Ross Clark. Uh, you lose weight, your blood pressure goes down, you look as fantastic as Jay. Plant-based diet, what's not to like? You even save the planet. Hmm. Well, I mean, far, far be it for me to tell Jay what to eat, but, I mean, I would have said from what he's described, he's sort of gone from one extreme to the other. And there, there is a sort of happy medium in between. Well, we are, as you say, omnivores. Um, we eat a bit of meat, we eat a bit of um, dairy product, a plant. I mean, most people do have a plant-based diet, I think, in the fact, in the sense that most of their um, uh, calories probably come from plant products. But, um, you know, when you speak to um, vegans, you say, you know, all about the sort of dangers of um, mineral deficiencies, vitamin B12 deficiency in particular, and they always say, oh, it's okay, because I take the supplements. And you say, well, you know, what does it say about your diet that you need supplements? I don't take food supplements, I don't take dietary supplements, pills and so on, I just have a balanced diet. And I mean, that is the best option for, for everybody. And I mean, to, to go back to the, the sort of environmental um, products, sort of reducing the, um, the, the, the footprint, the carbon footprint of meat industry. And so, okay, fair enough, but th th you can deal with that in other ways, um, such as, um, you know, experiments feeding um, cattle seaweed supplements re reduces um, hugely the, the amount of um, methane they, they produce and you know methane being the, the, the problematic greenhouse gas um, you can farm um, cattle in buildings collect the methane and use it as a fuel and there's a, there's a company in Denmark I think that actually produced a tractor to powered by methane that you, you know runs a methane produced on the farm so I, I don't think you should you should see that you know the, the sort of ruminant animals as, as a problem I mean sometimes in some sense it could be a resource you know the uh, the, 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 the methane can actually be used. So, you know, I, I say, you know, we are omnivores. Meat is part of our diet. And I say if there are environmental problems, sort those out and don't just sort of, um, you know, turn us vegan because you, you, you're going to end up with um, serious dietary problems for many people. Uh, David Bean is the political relations manager for the Countryside Alliance. David, uh, do you think we need to go vegan to save the planet? Would farmers be willing to transition to producing plant-based foodstuffs? I think that farmers are extremely versatile and they would be able to manage a change if needed. But that's not necessarily the case for all farms because part of what is determined by what can actually be brought uh, and produced on a given farm has to do with the nature of the land itself. And we found that a lot of the farms that specialise in producing particularly uh, sheep in the upland areas that they aren't using land that would be suitable for growing crops in the first place. Similarly, there is land that is being brought into use for, for example, solar farms. Uh, I was on a train just last week and I passed one of these and I saw sheep grazing around it. Well, that is not land that would be suitable for growing crops. Uh, really, there are certain environments where uh, livestock farming really is the only suitable use that it can be put to. Uh, yes, and we get a lot of value out of cows, for example, don't we, David? We use their skin, the hide of, of a cow, for leather, which is a lot more environmentally friendly than so-called vegan leather, which is basically polyester or plastic. We use the blood, which goes into many, many foodstuffs. Uh, the bones are, are ground up as fertilisers, ironically, to produce yes. uh, and grow plants. We use the meat, of course, yes, which indeed. we eat. I mean, there's, there's no bit of the cow that's wasted. We even drink the milk. Yes, and I think the other one thing that you didn't mention, which is also extremely important for those people who, you know, and, and we had mentioned made earlier of concerns over fertilizer prices, and that is a big problem at the moment. A lot of people who want to promote veganism are also very enthusiastic about organic farming. And what is it that fuels organic farming? Well, yes, the bones are part of it, but actually the manure is a huge part of what goes into organic farming. And if you take away uh, the ability to produce that, by livestock farming, then you are going to remove a resource that is extremely valuable to all manners of farming. Uh, my concern, Ross Clark, is that at the moment, what is the gentle suggestion by the government and by supermarkets that we should go 
plant-based is going to become an instruction at some point. That's my concern. Ross Clark. We're just connecting with Ross Clark at the moment. I think you'll agree it's an interesting conversation. Let's say the... So, uh, Ross, Ross, uh, do really, you mind? Uh, uh, forgive me, Ross. Do you mind? Uh, just uh, we just missed the, the, the start of that. Um, my concern yeah. is that at the moment we've seen it in the pandemic that what what is a suggestion or advice from the government and from big business will eventually become an instruction. Uh, there, there are plenty of people who would love to force veganism on us. Um, um, you know, so a lot of vegans, I mean, for the, it's, it's a matter of choice. They're not trying to stuff it down our throats. But um, the, there are there are some the sort of, you know, climate campaigners, the extreme end of that, um, who, who would love to uh, force veganism on us. And um, it's true. I, as for the supermarkets, I mean, I don't think supermarkets are going to force us to become vegan. I, mean, I think they're reacting, really, to uh, veganism as a fashion, and they, they will produce vegan. But, I mean, I've never been in a supermarket where I've had any trouble buying meat, for example, and I, I don't think your local Tesco's is suddenly going to uh, fall for um, the sort of extreme environmentalism and start banning meat from their shelves, and they would suffer, um, you know, a mass walkout of their customers if they did. Well, I wouldn't put it past them after we've seen their behaviour during the pandemic, but here's hoping, Ross, we will have freedom of choice when it comes to going to the supermarket and what we buy. Uh, Kerry, if I could come back to you. Last year, a study by University College London's Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health said parents must be aware of the risks of a vegan diet. In fact, children on vegan diets were found to be 1.2 inches shorter on average with smaller and weaker bones. And as mentioned there in Ross Clark's answer earlier, that it's recommended they take supplements. Shorter kids, it's not a ringing endorsement for a plant-based diet, is it? Well, I know the study you're referring to, and that has been used as a stick to bash veganism by the newspapers. I think the authors would be horrified by that, especially as the lead author advocates for a plant-based diet. But the, when you look at the actual findings of the study, the, the difference in height was about 5%. But the real interesting fact was that vegans had a 25% lower of, um, of cholesterol which means that they suffer less from heart disease. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a bit short and die of a heart attack. Uh, well, of course, that's a, a view that was uh, fleshed out in that study in relation to heart health. Jay Gardner, are you going to stay on the vegan diet? Yeah, 100%. I've been on it for three and a half years. And touching on the health aspect and obviously the vitamins and mineral aspect of it, um, I know exactly where I'm at in regards to what I should be eating and and my intake daily. But, I mean, for for example, the fibre intake, if you're on a meat diet, your fibre intake is going to be considerably lower than that in comparison to a plant-based diet. And I know Ross touched on the B12, and basically they, they, they believe that you get enough B12 by eating meat, but how much B12 is in meat? We don't actually know. You know, it's not labelled on the packet. We don't know that. And it's reconstituted. They're fed it via, you know, antibiotics and vitamins themselves. They don't produce it. Whereas I know exactly how much B12 I'm getting. So if I was to ask the average meat eater, how much B12 are you take, how much B12 do you get daily? They probably wouldn't be able to answer the question. Uh, Jay and Gardner, then yeah, you, you're obviously in fantastic shape. You, you look brilliant. You're a, a fabulous-looking man. I do hope Mrs Dolan isn't watching because she'll be <laughs> rethinking her decision to marry me in the first place. But um, would you be the beefcake that you are, that you currently are, if it hadn't been for all the meat that you ate in the many years of your life since birth? No, it's got absolutely nothing to do with that. Um, you know, I'm in, I'm in better shape now than when I was when I was eating make meat. And I feel a lot better. People always say that you need... A, where, where do you get your protein from? But... That protein aspect is taken out of proportion. A human, since protein's been recorded, protein nobody's ever been protein deficient. You couldn't even go protein deficient. It, it'd be hard to go even if you tried. So that protein aspect, you can get enough protein. I mean, I'm an example of that on a plant-based diet. Um, isn't there a problem, though, Jay, with a plant-based diet having more carbohydrates in it? That you're going to be eating potatoes, bread... 
pasta, rice. I mean, we know all of those things spike insulin and make you fat. No, not at all. Whatever, there's always an alternative to a meat, a meat when, you're, when you're eating meat. Whatever you would normally eat, you can get as a plant-based option. And you can get healthier options as well. Um, my, pro, my, my diet's high protein. If I want to drop it and have it low carbs, I can do. And if I want to increase the carbs... Again, I can do. I think, you know, it's it's the research aspect of it, which I spent a lot of time doing. So I know exactly what I should be eating rather than a lot of people might jump into the vegan diet and think, oh, I'm vegan, I'm healthy. You can be an unhealthy vegan, just mm. like you can be unhealthy on any diet. But if you take that healthy aspect and you do enough research, you can be very healthy from it. And one of the reasons that I cut out meat as well is and now we're touching on the health aspect is a lot of meats like your type one like your uh, type one carcinogenic meats which are your processed meats which potentially cause cancer so your bacon your burgers your sausages they, they cause cancer and then you have your type two carcinogenic so like your red meats or your beasts they probably cause cancer and for me that is something that you know it's a little bit deep but i didn't want to be on my deathbed at one point in my life thinking, I wish I'd done more to prevent this. And 90 to 95% of chronic disease is down to your diet and lifestyle. Um, Jay, in a moment, before we conclude, would you be willing to show us just how fit you are? And, uh, in what aspect? Take me top off? Well, we, we, might have to, we might have to do that. I'll also ask... <laughs> I'm going to ask Ross Clark as well to show me his abs, because I know he's got a few, as well as plenty of brain cells. Um, Ross Clark, Marion in Scotland, has said, um, as usual, a, a great show tonight, Mark. I will never go vegan, because you need a mix of foods. As I teach my 16-year-old granddaughter, we need fish, vegetables, beef, chicken, whole grains. Um, she cooks lovely stir-fries and a vast menu. And my concern is that... OK, uh, Jay Gardner is going to have a healthy diet. Kerry Waters the same. Very articulate, educated people. But I wonder whether busy households won't have time to grate carrots and to steam broccoli and to infuse their rice with garlic and broad beans. You know, they're just going to be eating Linda McCartney sausages, aren't they? So, sorry, who, who are you asking? Ross, just want to put that to you. Well, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. I, um, well, yes, I, yes, exactly. I mean, as um, Jay said, there are, there are unhealthy vegans around. I, I don't doubt there are a lot of people who could benefit from eating less meat and um, less animal products in general and, um, uh, you know, a fried breakfast and, and that sort of thing. I mean, that's not my diet. I mean, I was I would swear by a big bowl of porridge every morning. But, um, you know, I, I seriously would not want to go without meat. And um, I think if I did, I, th I you know, I, I think that some of us are actually re really quite intolerant of um, some vegetable proteins. And you, you think of, um, you know, vegan diets of people eating large amounts of lentils and so on. Well, I don't know about the cows producing a lot of methane, but I no, I would produce a lot of methane after a diet based on lentils. And uh, I think, you know, you know, the vegans often say, well, we, we know we've got a fantastic diet. Look at all these fantastic foods we eat. Well, say if you're an omnivore, there's nothing that stops you eating all the wonderful vegan foods they're trying to push at you. But, you know, you can have a bit of meat as well. And um, it seems to me veganism is it's very negative in that sense because it's taking something out of your diet. It's not putting extra things in it's taking something out of your diet that's been in in your diet for um uh, you've been in our diets for many thousands of years and um yeah you know i, I think there's considerable perils in, in ross, doing that ross clark very briefly if you can you've written extensively in the mail and the telegraph about climate change and about how the science on that is not settled you as a journalist question everything i would have thought the science around meat production in relation to climate change is also not settled. We can't take what's been said by the plant-based movement as fact, can we? Um, no, there's a lot of propaganda. And, I mean, you saw in the, the advert you showed at the beginning, I mean, they, they showed, you know, we're, we're all this water, you know, this is one of the, um, the, the, the sort of rather 
um, propagandist things we're, we're told by, by some of the vegan lobby that sort of meat requires vast amounts of um, water to produce. And what they do to get that sort of sum, they just add up all the rain that happened to fall on the, the fields where the um, cattle were produced. And, um, well, I say if the cattle weren't there, though, I mean, the rain's still going to fall, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> and, um, you know... The, you know, as we, we were saying earlier, it, it's not. There are large parts of Britain, for example, where it would not be possible to produce the kinds of, you know, almonds, avocados, soya, and all that sort of thing. You know, we part. One of the reasons we've ended up with the diet we have in Britain is because of the availability of farmland and the the, the suitability of the farmland. Um, to produce some, um, and and you say you know a, a cow in some senses is not efficient way of feeding a human being in that it takes the feed and calories and then you get fewer calories out, but um actually in 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 the context of the farmland we have in Britain, uh, a, a cow is actually quite an efficient device of converting low quality pasture into high quality food for humans and. Um, you know, I think okay. that the, the environmental argument is sort of hugely overdone. If you're interested in what Kerry Waters has had to say, why don't you check out their uh, website, viva.org.uk, which is a very interesting uh, read. I went through it this afternoon. And if you're interested in the work of the Countryside Alliance, go to countryside-alliance.org. Just time for Jay Gardner to bear all and show us the benefits <laughs> of a vegan diet. Jay, yeah, let's have it. I wasn't this, not going to lie. It's the full Monty. Kids, look away now. <laughs> O-M-G. Look at those guns. Look at the abs. It's happening. <laughs> Round of applause. Jay Gardner, you are a legend. I'm going plant-based tomorrow morning. Mrs Dolan won't know what done. hit her. I'll start with it. this banana. <laughs> Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.